Welcome to Diane Andrews in Black and White, and I'm your host, Diane Andrews. Thanks for being here with us today, whether you're joining us in our three million homes around the state of Louisiana and Mississippi, 50 parishes in Louisiana and four counties in Mississippi. Thank you, and we appreciate you. You are part of our family. People often ask me, where do you come on who don't see me? And we'll tell you that we come on on Cox at 6.30 p.m. in Baton Rouge, Lafayette, and New Orleans on Sunday and Tuesdays. Now, we're also on on the CW21, which is all the cable channels, and that's 1.7 million people, and that Cox Pelican Broadcasting is also another almost million people, and we often come on on METV and public access. So, but don't forget to watch us. We're going to have our handles up here for YouTube, for our social media. We want to stay in contact with you all and you tell us things that you would like us to do or things that you do like and things that you don't like that we're doing. So please join us on all our social media. You see the handle on it. We want you to subscribe more to our YouTube channel and that is www.youtube.com backward slash Diane Andrews Show. So let's talk about what this show is today. In this year, in 2019, we lost three great women, three women who helped change the world. One was our governor, the only female governor we've ever had in this state of Louisiana, Kathleen Brinkerow. She was the governor when we had Katrina, so we know what turbulent times those were. So we tell her and we wish her well and we thank her, Kathleen, Governor Blanco, for all you did for the state of Louisiana. Then a friend of mine, Nancy Parker down in New Orleans, Fox anchor, down there was killed tragically at work on an airplane during a show. So we want to tell you goodbye, Nancy, and good God bless and good things up there in heaven as you are. Then we're going to talk about the third person who this show is dedicated to. Her name was Sadie Roberts Joseph. Miss Joseph was a sharecropper's daughter. She came here from Woodville, Mississippi. And when her parents moved here, she went to Baton Rouge Vocational Technical School and then on to Southern University. She was a respiratory therapist and she worked diligently in the community. She worked with Veterans Day, with Juneteenth, and she also founded the only black African American museum in the city of Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Come on back and we're gonna hear some from her son and we're gonna hear from a coworker who worked with her on the things she was and who she was. And this will tell you how you can help change the world we're in today. Come on back to Diane Andrews in Black and White. Welcome back, my audience. You're really our friends and family out there, so we appreciate you coming back. And I think this show can help you see, again, how you can change the world, one person at a time. I have with me Jason Roberts, who was Miss Sadie Roberts Joseph's son. And he has a sister also, Dr. Angela Machen. How does she pronounce that last name? Machen. Machen, okay. And next to her, of course, when we build empires, as she did, you always have a right-hand person. You need a right-hand person. And this is one of her right-hand people right here, Ms. Jacqueline Jones, who is a librarian for Baton Rouge Community College. That's right. And you're, and I'm going to give Hotel Indigo some press here, so I may come and ask you all for something. All right. At Hotel Indigo, uh, Jason is the manager there at Hotel Indigo, a beautiful hotel downtown here in Baton Rouge. Yes. Let's start off, as I did with you, <laughs> Jason, uh, talking about your mother and the question I'll ask you. You probably got the answer this time, right? What would your mother want for people to say about her, and then what would you say about her? My mother would definitely want to um, be remembered as someone who gave of herself for her community. Um, nothing meant more to her than trying to bring some sort of unity and upliftment to her community. Mm -hmm. So that's what she would want to say. I would want to say, um, for everything that you knew about my mother in the public eye, she was a wonderful person, but for me, she will always be an amazing mother and someone who's truly and sorely missed by my family. Yes. 
Has, has there been any, any solace or anything on Mr. Ron Bell, I think, 38-year-old ex-con sex offender who purportedly put your mother in her car and stuffed her and suffocated her, and that's how she passed? Is there any, I know he is pleading non-guilty, not guilty from the public defender, Ms. Clark, Attorney Clark, who's representing him. Has, has there been any movement or anything that you've heard about, anything about the case? No, um, they, as far as I know, all they're doing is uh, waiting for sentencing and uh, to actually begin the court case. The trial. The they're trial. waiting yes. to go to trial. Yeah. Um, because I think there were some issues about DNA. He's saying right. that they took his DNA, the police did improperly, and... Mm -hmm and uh, all these things like that. And the issue was, for the audience who doesn't know, Miss Joan, Mrs. Joan, Miss Joseph was good enough and good-hearted enough to rent to a man who was an ex-convict, a sex offender, who did not pay her for three months. $1,200 is a, a small amount for someone's life. And I understand that she was cooking cornbread at her sister's and said, I'll be right back. And told no one what she was going to do. How tall was your mother? Uh, about five feet, maybe one inch. Yeah, that's maybe. what I thought. I met her before, and I'm five two. Yeah. So and she seemed to be a, a, even a little smaller than me. Right. But she had she had the veracity and the fierceness of someone six five. It yeah, seems like indeed. right. And in her determination, tell us, Jackie, Jacqueline Jones here. Tell mm -hmm. us, uh, how did you first meet her? In 2002 is when the Odell Williams. Uh, Black African American Museum opened here mm -hmm. in Baton Rouge, and the only one again in our city. Only one. I met uh, reviewing some of my papers and communications from SADC just recently upon our death. I found uh, a communication that had a date of 2003. So I'm going to say that that's the official date that I came into acquaintance with. Um, with so it was already open when she you was came. open, yeah. and uh, I being uh, an appreciative. African American of the history. Yeah. We sort of formed a, a, a friendship and an alliance that, um, true to Sadie's belief, that a culture is the glue that keeps a, a, a people together. Mm -hmm. I so believe that. Mm -hmm. And she was determined that the African Americans, not only local, but even nearby, wherever they were, that they needed to know and she was. the black history. She was determined. And she was a, an international figure, as I mentioned. I was in New York, and it was on Fox News <laughs> that she yes. had been uh, um, murdered and about the suspect, and probably, again, heinous yes. way she passed. Yes. But she was known, someone said, someone in Italy, I think, called mm -hmm. them who saw it in Italy. So she was a national figure. I think at what uh, was most admirable of Sadie was her, her tenacity to get her, her message out mm -hmm. that African American history is important, but she had such a humble spirit. Mm -hmm. What most admired was Sadie's level of energy. I could not keep up with Miss Sadie. And she was 75 years yes, old. Yes, I could not keep up with her. So we had a joke uh, between us, and I said, Miss Sadie, I want to be just like you when I grow up. <laughs> um, but being a librarian and having an appreciation for uh, history, uh, and also uh, experience with um, displays and, and exhibits. I would often help her with nearby library, uh, branch libraries mm -hmm. or whatever the library is to set up some exhibits. Mostly um, it was, if it was not for Black History Month, for Veterans Day, Juneteenth, yeah. uh, those were some of the holidays that she was most passionate about. And she really bought the Juneteenth celebration back to this city yes, in a big way, I yes. read. Uh, yes. Because the, at that time, our mayor, Sharon Broom, who was mm -hmm. then a state senator, asked her yes. to start working on Juneteenth to bring it back. Isn't yeah. that right. correct, correct, Jason? Yes. Yeah. And yeah, she Ms. actually helped yeah. to uh, get it uh, established as a statewide holiday as well. Yeah, absolutely. And the Veterans Day, where she all veterans of any color, so it was not just black history. Yeah. She wanted to bring everybody together, although our focus was let people know yes. about black history. Because yeah. if you don't know who you are as a people, how can you move forward? Right. Exactly. I love Miss Sadie when she did things like that. She was inclusive of all history. Right. But what the prompts an African American to me, and what it did for me, if you're going to look at veterans, the history of veterans, local veterans, I started looking at how many veterans are there any black veterans in my family? Yeah. And was just amazed, was blown away. Yeah. And that's what she says. Sometimes if you take a step backward, you leap into the future. So just that holiday of, um, 
giving a uh, paying homage to veterans where do i fit in this picture right and just was amazed at how many veterans was in my your family. own family right. your ancestry so that was mercedes yeah she just she put, brought out put the it, best in everybody yeah, just put it there. Yes. as much and as she could and that's probably why she went to see this man thinking she could collect her rent from him right. yeah patricia mcallister mm -hmm. Yeah. Duff, her uh, niece, mm -hmm. whose mother, that was her mother's house that she was at when she left. Was that her mother's um, house or her father? How did that she work? Went to when she left to go in the car to, oh, no, to it was collect a, the rent. Another aunt. Another. Because yeah. it's 12 children, I there read. Are 12, 12 children. <laughs> 12 children. That came over from Miss Woodville, Mississippi. From Woodville, Mississippi. And there actually is another set of our family from Gonzales. So, really? That was already here in Gonzales when they moved here. That was right, one reason so, they came to Louisiana? Yeah, so our family is incredibly huge. Quite. Do y'all have reunions, big family oh, reunions? Yeah. We, we haven't had one in a little while, but it's time yeah. for us to do it again. And they are in, <laughs> they're ridiculously huge. So, Jason, tell me what now are the plans for the African, Odell Williams, African American well, Museum? Okay, well, um, well, one of the last things, actually, before she passed, uh, that she did was she changed the name from Odell S. Williams, mm -hmm. uh, now in the museum, to the Baton Rouge African American mm -hmm. Museum. Um, so it's officially changed now to the Baton yes, Rouge. Yes, okay. it's officially changed. But um, I think we would be remiss not to always remember Miss Odell yes. S. Williams. Oh, yes. From what I've read, and she was quite an historian. She was, Back in definitely. her day, she used to sneak and teach mm -hmm. black history in the school and in churches, yes. and more in the schools, that wasn't allowed. And that's who really gave your mother the history the and some artifacts to actually start the museum mm -hmm. on the church grounds, that's correct? Right. Mm -hmm. Because that's they went right. to the same church. Correct, that's correct. But she was a lot older. and I, Was she deceased by the time it opened, Miss Odell? No. No, she, she was telling me, so she was there yeah, she's, for every she's there, the opening. I bet she was one proud person. Oh yes, to be named Incredible. after her too. She was, um, and and the culture of teaching is something that she transferred to, directly to my mom. Uh -huh. um, of the importance of teaching that by any means necessary, as right. Miss Odell Williams did. Um, so we're going to continue that legacy. Mm -hmm. uh, we are open again for visitors. Um, we are currently doing Wednesday, Friday. And every Saturday that LSU is out of town. No need open. when they're in town There's to open. No need when they're open. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, we're there to allow people to come so let, in. Let's give the address so people here. The will address know. is 538 South Boulevard, or you can look us up on Facebook. Mm -hmm. Or there's a website, uh, www.braahmuseum.org. So by all means, come check us out. Um, the museum is open for the public because that's who she dedicated it to. So I wanted to reopen it as soon as possible to allow people to come back in. That's great because a little five, six weeks ago, you didn't have it open when we just talked. Right, right. And now it is open. Yeah, uh, open. Three days, you said Wednesday? Wednesday, Friday, Friday and every Saturday that, that LSU, LSU is So two and a half days of average out of, right. out of, 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 of the week it's open there for uh, visitors to come in. There's a fee? No fee? Is there a fee? Uh, currently, we're doing no fee. We're oh, asking okay. if you wanted to donate, please feel free to donate. Uh, the museum is definitely looking for funding mm -hmm. um, for any partnerships that can bring in uh, so the needed funding. So if anyone's interested in sponsoring events there yes. or sponsoring you as a whole, mm -hmm. they have the opportunity yes. to uh, give you all a call or, or Facebook you Correct. and somebody will, will get, will get our, back to them. All of our contact information is on the website and yeah. the Facebook page as well. So. Tell me what was, if you had to say, her vision and has it changed to, to what you are going to do now? Tell me what your vision is and are you still working, uh, Jackie, are I you am. still working I with uh, Jason and is oh, Angela, your, your sister, part of this? Yes. She, so it's definitely. the two of you all are part of it. Yes. Um, so we're going to maintain the, the initial mission of my mother, which is to educate um, through history and to help to bring an awareness to history that will help to foster positive images within the community. Mm -hmm. um, but aside from that, we're going to, um, we're, we're definitely planning some ex expansion. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of uh, artists and things in the area who have contributed and helped my mother over the course of the years so they're going to be incorporated into the new vision um, it's going to be a lot of a community outreach it's going to be a lot of just um, community space mm -hmm. that we're going to we're going to tie in a lot more do you have like a board of directors yes or we do. Do, you, do you have that kind yes. of that work with you to help get the word out and help 
get sponsors for you yes. and, and, and work on. You need people that can bring, you know, more publicity right. and things like that on the board. Well, I sure is there anything else that you, you had some papers that you wanted to talk about, I think, Jackie? Was it something else you wanted to say that you had found, or that was about the 2003, was that, was that what you had found, you had mentioned prior to the show? Oh, no, it was, um, no, I keep a file on the say and the museum when uh -huh. started. That's why I had. Well, you're a librarian. I, you're very organized, <laughs> right? And papers are your thing, and books. No. And, and now, do you all Baton Rouge Community College? Do they have anything to do since you work there mm -hmm. with with getting uh, histories to the museum? Or it was never official. Uh huh. Uh, but yeah, there was a lot of interaction. Matter of fact, um, when I would or if it was brought to me, a significant topic or. Um, artifact that was in the community prevalent to the history of African Americans, I would always say was Sadie. Right. So I study um, the black cowboys. Um, oh, yeah. Didn't you write a book? Yeah, well, I was a contributing author yeah. for African Americans in uh, Frontier. Mm -hmm. And what... Um, How what, many black cowboys were there in Louisiana? Do you have there are oh, in, Louis in Louisiana? Well, in or, the country, if you know in the country. Well, I'm in, just being inquisitive now. Yeah. <laughs> uh, based on, like, after freedom, that's when the cowboys actually came out. Uh, because they were free. When when it was, emancip after emancipation. After emancipation population. Yeah. They, uh, even in slavery, they took care of the horse. They knew the horse. They took right. care of the horse when the horse was sick. Yeah, yeah. And they could ride, and, you know, authors of various uh, histories of cowboys in general pay such homage to the black cowboy, fearless, mm -hmm. the bravery. Yeah. And um, what got my interest, prompted my interest, um, a second grade teacher was talking to her children, the class, and one of the boys, she had a book, and it had a cowboy, and it was black, and, and um, she said, the black cowboys, and he said, no, he, could, he didn't believe that there were black cowboys. You never and see any on TV, never do you? Never see any. No. And um, that prompted me to say, you know, I wonder how many cowboys were there. Yeah, some say that's why, a, yeah. A fourth of uh, the, a how many fourth, were, some uh, say a fifth of the cowboys were, were black. Really? Uh, yes, that's, quite and so, a, that's a big number, however, because so there were a lot of cowboys time. back in the day. Uh, and so then, I, just persons are in my purview and circles, they knew that I, that, that was the topic of interest. Yeah, so I'm going to ask you to leave yes. us okay. with one thing that yes. you want to say to the audience about you, about your mission, about what you feel about uh, uh, the museum. Just one yes. thing you would like to leave, what you want to tell them, to, how to, their yeah. life, whatever. Miss Sadie started an African American museum for this community. It is my hope that Baton Rouge will see the significance and truly embrace it mm -hmm. and actually have, you know, to, to build on it and have an African-American museum here in the, in the city. In the Especially you change the name to, to right. foster yeah. the city. Yeah. We're going to take a short break and come on back to Diane Andrews and Black and White Park. Welcome back to Diane Andrews in Black and White in our tribute to Sadie Roberts Joseph. I had mentioned that our esteemed sheriff would be here to talk about his relationship with this great lady. And he is here with us, uh, Mr. Sid. Do I say sheriff? I don't say mister, I say sheriff. Sid or sheriff. Sid or sheriff is fine. Sid's hey, fine. Anybody carrying a gun? I say whatever you want me to say. Thanks for being here with me today. Thank We've you for having this me. for a long time to get yeah. him on, on the show. Tell me how well you knew Miss Sadie and... Uh... I met Miss Sadie uh, probably about 20 years ago, a little over 20 years ago, and uh, we were at a function at the church on East Boulevard and, and had a little walk down Government Street to the governmental building, and that's the first time I'd ever really met her. And of course, over the course of time, there was other functions she was at, and I was at at the same time. Uh, went by the museum four or five times, and. Yeah visited with her and uh, she was just a wonderful person. You know, she was just a genuine uh, individual who, who really cared, yeah. you know, I mean, uh, her dedication to history, uh, to education, to children uh, was just phenomenal. And what I liked about her most all of everything was that she was the same every time you were around her, just, just a positive influence. And uh, she had that drive in her. And, and, of course, when, after that tragedy took place, we were talking to family and all. I said, well, she was just always just so nice. And, and some of the family members says, 
She could get feisty when yeah. she was ready, <laughs> depending on what the topic Get was. That drive, yeah, feisty yeah. Usually. But she was committed, and yeah. it's amazing to me what she accomplished there with the museum, more or less by herself. Right. You know, and 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 to continue to continue that legacy is just is unbelievable. But uh, you know, she was an advocate for change, right. but but a change in a positive positive change. Positive right. change. Yeah. You know. She knew that we had to come together. We, right. we, we had to come together as a people mm -hmm. to really affect a, a positive, lasting change. And uh, I, I just admired her. I admired her for who she was. I didn't know her that well. I just met her two or three times. And I, I didn't know she was the director for the Juneteenth celebration. Yeah. I was reading about the show that uh, Sharon, our, our yeah. mayor, had appointed her when she was a state senator. So yeah. it was. she did a lot in a short amount of time. She did. She really did. I was did. happy to hear her son say he and her sis, his sister, Angela, yeah. are going to take the yeah. and keep on yeah. with the torch yeah. that she had started. So yeah. that's good to hear that it won't just die away. That's that exactly her right. Her legacy will continue. That's exactly right. And they both are very, very committed to it. Right. And uh, I think it's a testament to her and how, how she raised uh, her children. Well, he's the manager at Indigo. I told him he owes me now. I'm going to go down there <laughs> <laughs> into that, to that hotel downtown. Yeah. And it's, it's uh, Dr. Angela Mation. I've never met her, but reading about her. She was supposed to be, but she got sick and she oh, sent, okay. Uh, okay. a great replacement for her, her brother. Yeah. But uh, she's uh, quite an accomplished uh, a person herself. That's her exactly is. right. That's she's exactly. the uh, commissioner of the port over there, besides the mansion right. management uh, right. consulting company. That's right. With her PhD in uh, global health she, and environmental she, science. She has a lot of titles. She really does. <laughs> I, I really was looking forward to meeting her. I'll have to meet her later. But I wanted to talk to you about this also. Lyman White came by. And I had asked him if he had one of the actual backpacks that you all had handed out. I have some pictures. They'll yeah. be on the screen of you. That uh, Savannah and I have okay. to. Hey, Savannah, I have to give you a shout out. She is wonderful. She your, is your PIO she person. Is. She really takes care of business. That's right. Um, she sent me some pictures of you handing them out. I wanted to have the actual bag here, which says Sadie Roberts Joseph, the Queen Mother Backpack, and passes to professional athletes supporting students. So a lot of people in this community know Lyman. How did you all come up with the idea of the backpack? Well, I, I had known Lyman from years back. And uh, uh, last year, we were actually at, at a practice uh, session with LSU in the indoor facility. It was for the Alabama game during the Alabama week. And uh, he was promoting pass. And uh, he, he had me take a little video with him there. And of course, me, I, I was slow. I had to do it about five times before I got it right. But uh, Lyman came by my office um, at, and, and, you know, was telling me about the backpacks. And, and he was asking for my, and this was before uh, Miss Sadie was killed. And he was asking me about the backpacks and would I help them in, in that endeavor. And, uh, you know, in raising money, raising funds for, to give out the backpacks to these children that needed them. And I said, certainly, I'll be glad to. Well, he had an epiphany, as he, as he said, yeah. uh, and he called me a couple of days later, and it was after, after uh, she, passed. She, she has passed. And uh, he said, I got to come talk to you. I just, I got a, a great, great idea. He said, why don't we do something to, to make a tribute to her, to continue her legacy yeah. so kids and, uh, realize who she was and, and continue that along. And he told me what he wanted to do, and he yeah. told me he wanted to put her name on the backpacks and all. That was wonderful. I'm sure yeah. you all will probably make this, I don't know, an annual. Like, I hope so. Yeah, I hope so. Like I, I told Lyman I was totally committed, and, yeah. uh, and I'm still committed to doing that. So hopefully we'll be able to. I want to talk to you, and I'm going, going to ask you, is there anything you can say about the case besides what we read in the paper? This Mr. <laughs> Bell, I guess, yeah. the eight-year-old guy, sex offender, it seems, has been yeah. in prison over $1,200. Yeah, it, it, it's such a tragedy over, just to kill someone over $1,200 right. like that. And, you know, uh, I don't know all the circumstances of it. Baton Rouge City Police handle a case. Uh, you know, we, we work with them at, a, at the VCU through the Violent Crime Unit. Our detectives, our homicide detectives mm -hmm. is theirs. But uh, they were, you know, they got calls on it right off the bat. As soon as it, it happened, they were getting calls. So I'm glad the, the uh, public stepped up. Yeah, and is he still in jail? Yeah, he, he is, he is still, still in jail. Yeah. And yeah. Sam, 
what I read last, that he was not guilty is what, I don't know if he Yeah, he, he entered a plea of not guilty through his lawyer, but I, oh. we'll see. Yeah. I, I was reading about you, and you started, you know, in the East Baton Rouge uh, uh, Parish. He has a deputy yeah. you're from uh, yeah. around here. Yeah. But I, and then I was reading about, about this, the patch. The patch. Yeah. I thought this was so nice. Uh, can you turn around maybe a little so we are stand up and they can get this? What the 13 stars are for and the 911 tribute is on. Right. Here. Explain that. I, I didn't know. Well, if you do, you have if you can see the patch. Uh, I designed this patch, and one thing I wanted, I wanted sheriff to be prevalent. So when people you walk up to someone, they know that this is a sheriff's deputy. So we had sheriff prevalent on the top, but I wanted to pay tribute. Uh, not only to our, our, our nation, uh, our state, and our city, but to 9-11 mm -hmm. as well. And uh, the flag, of course, is represented in what you see with the red, white, and blue. But we have uh, 11 stripes. Mm -hmm. We have nine stars here at the top. We have three stars here that represent the three terrorist targets. Then we have a larger star that commemorates Flight 93, which, which those heroes went down with it. And then, of course, in the star itself, the sheriff's star, I have the state emblem in the middle and East Baton Rouge Parish. But in each corner of the star, we have the Fleur de Lis that Isn't represents a six? six point star. Point star yeah. And in each point, we have the Fleur de Lis that represents the city of Baton Rouge. So I've got the city represented, the, the parish represented, the state represented, and the nation all in one patch. When I read so. about it when I was, I, I was doing my research on people before the show, I said, like, wow, what an artistic, beautiful, and it, it's so meaningful. Yes. You've got so yes. much on there about the country, the sacrifices, the, That's you right. know, the first responders. That's right. Uh, so I, I think because, uh, as you know, and, and Paul, Chief Paul and everybody knows, I'm a big advocate. For, yeah. for our people in, in uniform. No, you where you are, are you have been. You're our first yeah. responder, and yeah. I appreciate that. Of course, you know, a lot of things we need to fix as we do in any, any each other, right? That's but, right. Uh, but the people need to realize the first people that you're going to call That's is right. going to be. That's be right. Somebody. And, and that, was my, that was my main uh, reason, Diane, was just to, you know, to represent all of those things I, I just mentioned, but to to perpetuate the memory of all of those First responders yeah. who lost their lives. And they're uh, still losing them because, at, right, of, the because of the toxic uh, poison, poison that, that they w inhaled and, and, yeah. and went through. Well, thank you so much, Diane. I appreciate it. And I appreciate what you do for the city and uh, all the things that you do here at the station. I try to shine a light on everything I can. Thank you so much. <laughs> You're welcome.